You've talked a lot about the global versus the national, but increasingly it seems to me that the world situation is in the hands of identity groups. We look at people within the United States who have been recruited by ISIS. We look at these other groups which have formed, which go outside of national bounds, but still represent significant authorities. How are they to be integrated into the system, and how is a diverse set of identities to be made coherent under either national or global leadership? Well, the, the problem of, of such diverse identities is a problem for nationalism as well. Uh, nationalism believes in a single monolithic identity and in an exclusive, or at least the more extreme versions of nationalism, believe in an exclusive loyalty to a single identity. And therefore, nationalism has had a lot of problems with people wanting to divide their identities Uh, between various groups, so there is, it, it's not just a problem, say, for, for a global uh, vision. And I think that, um, again, history shows that it, you shouldn't necessarily think in such exclusive terms. If you think that there is just a single identity for a person, I'm just X, that's it. I can't be several things, I can be just that. That's the start of the problem. Uh, you, You have religions, you have nations that sometimes demand exclusive loyalty, but it's not the only option. There are many religions and many nations that enable you to have diverse identities at the same time. But is, is one explanation of what's happened in the last year that, um, that a group of people have got fed up with, if you like, the, 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 the liberal elites, for want of a better term, obsessing over many, many, many different identities and them feeling, but what about my identity? My, I am being completely ignored here. And by the way, I think I'm, I thought I was the majority. And, uh, and that that's actually sparked a lot of the anger. Uh, yes, yeah, so, so identity is always problematic because identity is always based on fictional stories <laughs> that sooner or later collide with reality. Almost all identities, I mean, beyond the level of the basic community of a few dozen people, are based on a fictional story. They are not the truth. They are not the reality. It's just a story that people invent and tell one another and start believing. Um, and therefore, all identities are extremely unstable. They are mm. not a biological reality. I mean, sometimes nationalists, for example, think that the nation is a biological entity. It's made of the combination of, of soil and blood creates the nation. But this is just a fictional story. Um, soil and blood kind of makes a gooey mess. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it does. And also it, it messes with your mind uh -huh. when you think too much that I am a combination of soil and blood. If you look from a biological perspective, um, obviously none of the nations that exist today existed 5,000 years ago. Homo sapiens is a social animal, that's for sure, but for millions of years, Homo sapiens and our hominid ancestors lived in small communities of a few dozen individuals. Everybody knew everybody else, whereas in, in Modern nations are imagined communities in the sense that I don't even know all these people. Mm -hmm. I mean, I come from a relatively small nation, Israel, and there are eight million Israelis. I never met most of them. I will never meet most of them. Uh, they basically exist here. <laughs>